more than nine million wild boars attacked a series of farms in South Carolina, causing serious damage to the agricultural industry estimated at 12.6 million USD. What countermeasures did farmers use to prevent damage caused by millions of wild boars? Follow the video with me. Wild pigs in South Carolina cause more than $12.6 million in damage to the agricultural industry each year. On the afternoon of June 15, 2023, a herd of 50 to 100 wild boars attacked an unharvested wheat field causing damage to more than 100 hectares of crops. According to information from people living in that area, they gnawed and trampled all the wheat plants, causing heavy damage to the wheat field and making it impossible to harvest, causing great damage to farmers. In South Carolina, Hunters must strictly follow government regulations. To receive a hunting license, hunters must be in good health to navigate difficult terrain effectively. A hunter's vision must also meet specific standards, typically 20 slash 20 to observe wild boar at a distance of 308 feet, requiring great accuracy. Compliance with these regulations helps ensure hunter safety and contributes to protecting the environment and wildlife. Wild boar hunting season in South Carolina begins on July 1st and runs through February 28th statewide, possibly extending into March and April in some special areas specified in the permit. Let's carve it nochmal ab. Und so konnte ich die Gelegenheit auf. In this area, hunting seasons can vary from year to year so hunters should check for exact information with the South Carolina Wildlife Management Agency. During autumn and winter, wild boar activity increases in searches for food reserves for the winter. wild boar reproduce most vigorously at this time, so the license clearly states that hunters are not allowed to hunt them, and if they violate, they will be severely punished. Hunting wild boar with teammates brings many benefits in terms of safety and efficiency. Hunting wild boars is dangerous due to their ferocious nature and can cause serious injuries. Or hunting in groups increases safety because group members can support each other and help in emergencies, such as providing first aid for a wild boar attack. Additionally, increase hunting efficiency by sharing the task of finding wild boar hideouts.
quarry, hunters must prepare all necessary equipment, including guns, ammunition, first aid kits, GPS devices, and communication tools. Hunters also check local regulations and carry the necessary licenses to ensure compliance with the law. In South Carolina, there is a temperate climate. The weather here can also change unexpectedly and become harsh, especially during fall and winter. This can cause many difficulties for hunters when hunting wild boar. Hot weather can cause hunters to become dehydrated, suffer from heat stroke, and affect their health and ability to concentrate. Therefore, they need to fully prepare essential products such as drinking water, energy-rich food, protective clothing, and medical support equipment. Using drones to monitor wild boar activity from above has brought many benefits. First, Drones provide panoramic views, making it easier for hunters to detect and track wild boar movements in complex terrain. Second, thanks to being equipped with a high-quality camera, it can collect clear images and videos, even in low light or bad weather conditions, which is especially important in accurately determining the location. Third, it helps hunters save time and effort compared to traditional methods while minimizing the risk of accidents for humans due to moving in the forest. This was Sandra Jume's first wild boar hunting experience in South Carolina, showing her excitement and effort. The hunt took place in a forest covered with many trees. Sandra is very focused and enthusiastic, but the wild boar often moves out of range, making it difficult for her. Despite many challenges, the hunting experience is still very enjoyable. Sandra's positive attitude and sense of humor motivated the other hunters on the team, which she shared that she will continue to improve and be more successful in her next hunt stop. Wild boar hunting in South Carolina has gradually become more popular with increasing female participation. For some conservative communities, they do not support women participating in hunting for traditional and cultural reasons. They believe that hunting is men's work, requiring strength that women can hardly meet. They are concerned that women's participation in hunting may affect men's traditional roles in family and society. Besides, advocates argue that women have the right to participate in any activity they are passionate about, including hunting.
They argue that women's participation in hunting can help promote gender equality, break down traditional barriers, and create a more diverse and inclusive hunting environment. Does women's participation enhance the hunting experience and contribute to promoting gender equality? This is an important question as we are witnessing a change in the way women's roles are viewed in hunting activities considered male. If you agree with hunting activities involving women, comment number one. This hunt brought success to the hunter who, with the assistance of his comrades, shot down five wild boars, which weighed about 88 pounds. Successful hunting has created comfort and excitement for hunters who want to feel conquered. Smooth coordination among group members plays a big role in ensuring the results of the hunt. When hunting feral hogs in South Carolina, hunt in areas permitted by hunting license, including populated areas and national forests and conservation areas. Hunting areas are allowed in in areas far from residential areas to minimize the impact of noise on people's lives. Many people disagree about using guns because loud sounds can affect the lives of other animals. Therefore, choosing hunting areas far from populated areas and complying with hunting regulations helps balance hunting needs with environmental protection. Team. Comment zero if you support South Carolina gun hunting. Click the like button if you find our videos interesting. Share the video to express support for women participating in wild boar hunting. Thank you for watching the whole video and please continue to watch the video with me. Hello friends, Florida, one of the states located in the eastern part of the United States, is facing a serious challenge to agriculture and local communities, the invasion of wild monkeys. The animals that cause a significant damage to Florida and agriculture, estimated by about $75 million per year. Furthermore, their ability to attack humans possess a risk to the community. The way to control this situation has given a rise to a series of measures, of which shooting down wild monkeys is one of the popular methods. Conducted by licensed Florida hunters, this method uses hunting equipment to shoot wild monkeys. However, hunters must strictly comply with Florida state hunting regulations. Hunters can use fruits to attract monkeys, and this will make us find monkeys much, much easier. Mm -hmm. 
Shooting down wild monkeys is considered an effective solution to control the number of wild monkeys. A report from the Florida Department of Natural Resources and Environment said that about 10,000 wild monkeys are shot down each year. However, it is important to note that this measure is also ethically controversial. Shooting down wild monkeys is the most commonly used method in Florida to control the wild monkeys population but is also the most controversial. Some people believe this measure is cruel and unnecessary, especially considering the intelligence and affection of wild monkeys. However, supporters of this measure say it is the most effective way to control the number of invasive wild monkeys. Maintaining a balance between controlling the wild monkey population and the ethics of dealing with this situation remains a major challenge. Continued research and discussion of other control measures may help shape the future of wild monkey management in Florida. Planting these types of barrier trees isn't only a means of protecting agriculture from attacks by wild monkeys, but can also be an environmentally friendly solution that does not harm other animals. The cactus with its thorny appearance, the eucalyptus with its unpleasant fragrance, and the verbena with its hard leaves help prevent the entry of wild monkeys. Importantly, planting this barrier can create a protective perimeter around the fields, helping to maintain a balance between agricultural protection and the survival of wild monkeys. This is an example of how people and communities can seek natural solutions to handle complex problems in agriculture and protect the environment at the same time. This smart choice of using trees not only creates an environment suitable for agriculture, but also helps maintain diverse flora and fauna. Supporting the development of wild monkeys and their natural environment, by combining agricultural intelligence and respect for the environment, we can ensure that both humans and nature can exist together in balance. Planting these barrier trees not only helps protecting agriculture, but also promotes positive interaction between humans and nature. This is an example of how we can respond to challenges without destroying the natural environment and other animals, while creating a stable balance Dogs are animals trained to perform many tasks, and their use to attack monkeys has been used successfully in several locations around the world. Trained dogs are capable of attacking, chasing monkeys away from crop fields and urban areas. The effectiveness of this measure is due to the monkey's fear of dogs, and sometimes it only takes the presence of a few dogs in the area to keep them away. This helps control the monkey population effectively without causing great harm to them. Using dogs to attack monkeys not only helps protecting agriculture, 
and the environment, but is also an example of how humans can find creative solutions to challenges in animal management, wildlife and maintain balance in nature. The use of cage traps is an organized method to control the wild monkey population. Types of cage traps include knit traps, box traps, and burrow traps. The use of cage traps allows us to safely capture and collect wild monkeys that need control. Most importantly, this method does not cause pain to the monkeys, ensuring the capture process is humane and does not cause harm to the monkey's health. After capture, the process of caring for wild monkeys is an important step. Wild monkeys need to be health checked and vaccinated to ensure that they are not carrying any infectious diseases. Additionally, providing food and habitat similar to their natural environment is necessary. Another important thing is that the area where we release wild monkeys must be suitable for their natural living needs. This helps in the preservation of natural habitat of wild monkeys and ensures that they have the opportunity to live freely and effectively reintegrate back into the wild. Trapping cages and caring for monkeys in other areas is an effective and humane way to control the wild monkeys population. However, to implement it effectively, coordination between authorities, farmers and communities is needed. Only through this partnership can we ensure that controlling the wild monkey population not only helps protecting the environment, but also ensures the safety and sustainability of the development of both humans and wild monkeys. Have you ever met a wild monkey before? And what have you done to stop it? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. Why do Australians call it a fox epidemic and where did they originate? They were introduced from Europe in the 19th century. Initially, they were raised for entertainment purposes, but quickly adapted and became a dangerous invasive species. Later, due to their ability to reproduce so quickly, they can give birth from four to 12 cubs per birth, causing the number of foxes to increase dramatically each year. Their ability to adapt is very fast, so they can survive in many different habitats in changing weather conditions. During the breeding season, fox cubs need food to grow. But why is food in Australian grasslands insufficient and becoming scarce? The cause is prolonged drought and temperature changes causing many small animals the fox's main food source to be depleted. The increase in the number of other predators such as wild dogs and wild cats also contributes to reducing fox's food sources. Food scarcity forced the invasive foxes to search for new food sources and the city became a promised land for them.
Invasive foxes raid urban areas to steal food from pets, rummage through trash cans, and search for any possible food source. This action leads to many serious consequences that can have a major impact on the transmission of several dangerous diseases to humans and livestock, including rabies and tuberculosis. Are you confused and afraid when foxes invade your living area? And what do you think is the most important reason for the increase in the number of invasive foxes in the city? Please comment below so everyone can share with you. When foxes invaded the city, they broke into Australian people's homes in search of food. They are not afraid of humans and are ready to cross fences and windows at night to steal cat food. According to statistics, the city of Sydney is the most affected by the problem of invasive foxes, that hundreds of cases of foxes attacking people's houses and stealing cat food occur here every year. So, in the fight for food between foxes and cats, who will win? The answer may surprise you, domestic cats can become prey for foxes. Although adult cats can defend themselves better, kittens are still very weak and vulnerable to attack. Foxes may have an advantage over domestic cats due to their 8 to 12 pounds greater body weight and wild instincts. How does the problem of invasive foxes dumping urine on street areas affect the environment? Because fox urine contains ammonia and other chemicals that can pollute water, soil and air. The stench from fox urine can spread widely, affecting people's quality of life. At the same time, encroaching foxes dump waste indiscriminately affecting streets, sidewalks, and other public areas, creating an unsightly image and causing a loss of sympathy for tourists and local people. You're it about doesn't to stop see there. something truly Fox invasion is the terror of Australia. One morning, 62-year-old Mary was taking care of her front garden in the suburbs of Sydney, Australia. Before she could react, Mary was attacked by the huge invasive fox. Mrs. Mary went to the hospital, where she was diagnosed with lacerations and a high risk of infection. Doctors had to perform emergency surgery to treat her injuries. Fortunately, after many hours of surgery and treatment, Mary was out of danger and gradually recovered. However, this horrifying incident left her with both physical and mental wounds. Mrs. Mary always feels worried and scared every time she goes out. Mary's story is a wake-up call for Australians about the dangers of invasive foxes. To cope with the damage caused by invasive foxes, Australians have organized fox hunting activities that usually take place in the winter, from June to August, when foxes' food sources are scarce and they are forced to have to look for more food. In 2023, the fox hunting season campaign will be deployed on a large scale in many Australian states, attracting the participation of thousands of hunters. Each hunter is paid a bounty for each fox they kill. Thanks to this campaign, the number of invasive foxes in Australia has decreased significantly, contributing to protecting the environment and protecting human safety. The New South Wales government has spent $1 million to support professional hunters to eliminate foxes in the area. During the hunting journey, each hunter will be provided with hunting equipment that is properly licensed within the organization. The use of hunting equipment is considered the most effective measure to quickly reduce the number of invasive foxes in the city.
Hunting invasive foxes in Australia is an exciting yet challenging activity. To ensure the safety and efficiency of your trip, you need to carefully prepare the following. A prerequisite to participating in fox hunting is that you must have a valid hunting license issued by the local authority. Applying for a license usually requires you to complete courses on hunting equipment safety, wildlife knowledge, and hunting laws. What is necessary in every hunting journey is to be mentally prepared for unexpected situations that may occur during the hunting process. And you, are you a hunter who specializes in hunting invasive species? However, the use of hunting equipment needs to be strictly controlled to ensure the safety of hunters and surrounding animals. Each time people go hunting, people are allowed to hunt a certain number of foxes according to local government regulations. The type of hunting equipment called 308 Winchester used for fox hunting is also different from coyote hunting equipment, ensuring greater efficiency and safety. Thanks to these efforts, the number of invasive foxes in Australia has been significantly reduced. It is estimated that in 2023, the number of foxes has decreased to 7 million from 10 million the previous year. However, this is only the first step in repelling invasive foxes. It is necessary to have the cooperation of the entire society, including the government, people, wildlife protection organizations, and scientists, to come up with more effective and sustainable solutions in the future. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, Please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.